So Rusty made a video ranking all 308 weapons. A lot of you wanted me to review the tier list, but 308 weapons is a lot and would be much too large of a video for me to do if I did it all in one go. So over the next however long it takes, I'll be breaking down his video class by class and fixing it and giving you an objective tier list in both PvE and PvP. Additionally, for PvP, I will have several top tiers give their thoughts on it before I finalize the tier list. If you want me to review a certain class next, please leave it down in the comments and I will get to it as soon as I can. Obviously, with the DLC coming up, it's going to take a little bit of time for me to get through all of the classes as there is a lot of weapons. And since I have to formulize and test everything by hand, such as DPS, status damage per second, poise damage per second, it does take a long time and it's a lot of effort. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. And if you have any additional questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section and I'll get to it as soon as possible. Everything was ranked with all kinds of different criteria in mind, how fun the movesets are, how effective they are against however many types of enemies, damage, range, consistency, just about everything down to how they look artistically. All weapons were ranked with all different kinds of criteria in mind, how fun the movesets and animations are. So like already that, like in my mind, worst to best means like you're trying to be objective. Like bro, the Cestus and F tier, that's crazy. Anyways, that's just F tier. Like, Cestus is not, like, <laughs> Cestus are good. They're very good. I did a no-hit run with the Spike Cestus, which are basically the same. The bleed doesn't really come into effect because the bosses die way too quickly. Because they do so much damage. Oh, yeah, and, uh, of course, Alabaster Lord Sword here is, that's crazy, man. <laughs> and D tier. Alabaster Lord Sword is one, it's maybe the, it's like top five Charger 2 weapon in the game, probably. Hoslo's Pedal Whip in S tier? <laughs> I did a run with this thing and it was it was basically trash, man. Like even even for a bleed build, it's not good. The best whip for sure is the Arumi. Which I didn't see where that was, but I see where the Arumi is. 106 in B tier. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this almost does seem like if you just put every weapon into a randomizer and then shuffled it, like, this is what you'd get, basically. And then just put it in, in order that the randomizer came out at. Is, yeah, Darkmoon Greatsword 51. This this could easily be argued for number one. Today we're breaking down the whips. Now whips are a very niche class. They are long range. They have the longest range of any weapon class. However, they have very low damage and their attack speed and recovery is not that great. On the plus side though, in PvP, they cannot be parried. Number 304, the whip. Whips as a weapon type have mostly been met with dismissal for years, and unless you're planning a playthrough as Trevor Belmont, the average player is probably never going to look at them seriously. Whips are the kinds of weapons you usually need to force to work, and Elden Ring has some notable exceptions. The Pedal Whip and Giant's Braid stand out with performance that's not just great, but consistent. The Urumi offers whip users more variety in physical damage because of its slash and thrust attacks, and the standard whip does absolutely none of this. Like, it, it has no no unique attributes that make it stand out whatsoever, which is something you desperately need on a weapon that can't even perform critical attacks. Weapons like this are why whips have the overlooked reputation that they usually do. Number 177, the Thorned Whip. This whip is associated with the Briars of Sin and the prelates that follow the fire monks around for no reason. There's multiple item descriptions that categorize the Briar spells into the magic damage category, yet the whip deals pure physical damage. This inconsistency probably isn't on purpose, as Briars have always been a little confusing but some Briar Sorcerers can even be seen with fire emitting from their stabs. The stats are very comparable to Hoslow's Whip, but it's also not a unique weapon. Farming it is a chore, grinding the stones for it is a chore, and it doesn't even have a huge selection of quality ashes. But if you manage to actually find the damn thing, then yes, I suppose it is a pretty capable whip. 
Number 127, the Magma Whip Candlestick. Perhaps you like the idea of farming two Magma Curve Swords in efforts to power stance them in a single playthrough, but that's generally a tell that you haven't actually tried to farm them. I can only promise you that picking up a single static drop and power stancing it with a fire weapon is signing up for much less suffering. The Candlestick is also capable at zoning and ranged damage, the unique skill can be used to push invaders into walls or uncomfortable spaces, and the scaling is really nice for whip-centered builds since you're probably already leveling decks anyways. Number 110, the Giant's Red Braid. I love this whip just because it makes sense. I can't even properly count how many examples we've seen of odd balancing decisions, particular scalings that make no sense with the weapon it's on, and stat requirements misleading people into thinking one stat should be prioritized over another, and the Giant's Red Braid is just none of that shit. Requires strength and faith but only 12 decks, scales the strongest with strength and faith, both of which are extremely important in fire-themed builds, affinities, and incantations. The unique skill doesn't have any hyper armor, nor does it need any half the time. Why abuse your own hyper armor when you can just mulch everyone else's poise instead? Also, it's great for a Kratos cosplay, in case anyone out there hasn't thought of that idea yet, somehow. Number 106, the Urumi. Pierce damage on a whip? Are you pulling my leg? Because you should stop. That's legally assault, and you can get in a lot of trouble. This thing is just fucking weird. Keen Affinity granted a 1.85 scaling modifier in dex, which is technically an S, but just barely. To my knowledge, it also deals slash damage exclusively, despite the heavies showing you hardening the blade and thrusting it forward. Although it's a Night Folk weapon, you can find it early in Takaria Manor, at which point dex builds will already have easily met its requirements. The charged heavy can feel a bit awkward because it has two hits but starts with a shorter ranged attack, which kinda shits on the whole point of using a whip, but the extraordinarily high dex scaling grants huge advantages with lightning themed dashes, and the Kinarumi with good stats ends up having the highest physical AR out of any whip. Number 27, Hoslo's Pedal Whip. On top of being one of the easiest weapons to be able to power stance without rolling over into New Game Plus, Hoslo's Whip is also fully infusible and buffable, while having a physical AR that barely pulls ahead of every other whip in its class. Cold Affinity somehow winds up having better deck scaling with Lightning Affinity, but that's not nearly enough to ever make me say this weapon doesn't deserve the recognition it gets. It still keeps its C scaling in decks with Blood Affinity, which, if we're being honest, is all that really matters to most of you. So Rusty's breakdown of the whips isn't entirely wrong outside of the fact that he doesn't know Rumi does thrust damage on the charged heavy attacks, and that he somehow thinks the Hoslo's pedal whip is good on the blood affinity. Doesn't make a lot of sense since it already has an 8 lead, it would be best on the fault affinity. However, he does seem to massively overrate the whips as a weapon class outside of the regular whip being in D tier or F tier. The whips are not good as a class. They are one of the worst classes you could ever pick. They have low DPS and the range increase over something like a spear does not justify its extremely slow and long recovery time. So now I'm gonna break down the whips for PVE, give the DPS and my thoughts just overall on them. Starting off, the L1 chain is your best bet for having high DPS. Doesn't mean it's going to be good DPS, it's just the highest you can get. The poise damage per second on the L1 chain is 4.14, so not great. The Keaton Whip doesn't even break 500 damage per second, it's at 497. That's already very bad if you watched the previous video, the claws were in the thousands, being able to break 1200. Obviously, not very good. The key in Arumi is at least a little bit better. It's able to get 621 DPS. Still not great, but it's at the point where I would call it usable in a regular circumstance. The Occult Thorn Whip is 475 when not factoring status, 622 DPS when you're factoring status. Hazel's Pedal Whip is at 478 DPS or 633 when you're factoring status. For the two bleed whips, they are able to maintain decent damage per second just because the extra 150 DPS from bleed, it's still very low DPS, especially for a bleed weapon. Then we have the Giant's Red Braid getting 514, obviously very low DPS. And the Mega Mouth's Candlestick getting 475. This is the lowest DPS I've tested save for some low int spells that I was testing on a limb. That is very bad, and as I said, the range just does not justify the low DPS. 
For the heavy attack DPS, I calculated that with the Hazel's Pedal Whip, and the charge attacks include the Axe Talisman and the Spiked Crack Tear. So on charge you're getting 415 with a poise damage per second of 3.17 and for a total of 560. That's not good, but as we've seen, the heavy attacks should only have lower DPS. However, the charged one is where it gets interesting. The charged DPS is 405, so lower than the uncharged version, but the poise damage per second is 7.5 which is the highest poise damage that the whips are able to get. For the Rumi special attacks, it has an uncharged DPS of 447, with a poise damage per second of 3.1. And for the charged, it is 603, with a poise damage per second of 7.2. Again, a lot higher poise damage per second compared to the L1 chain, but still not good poise damage per second. As for the Asha War DPS for the Giant's Braid and the Magma Wind Candlestick, Sea of Magma, as just itself, gets 513, so a little bit better than the L1 chain, with a poise damage of 4.5. However, if you hold it down and loop and never go to that final ending swing, you're going to have a damage per second of 740, but you are going to lose some poise down per second, you're going to go down to 3.4. It's a trade-off, but since it's the only way for Magma Whip to really be viable and have good DPS, just loop the Ash of War. Note that it does consume Sama and FP when you're looping it, so you will run out eventually. And then for the Giant's Red Braid Flame Dance Ash of War, doing 293 DPS with a poise damage of 4.1, so now for the breakdown, the whip is outclassed in every way outside of weight, do not use it. Even though it can be acquired early game from Castle Morn, going north to carry a manor, to get the Arumi is a much better option. Speaking of the Arumi, the Arumi offers a unique heavy attack as I said, that when charged is better than the standard charged heavy attack. It outclasses the whip in every way outside of range and weight, it is the best whip when not factoring in status. And as I said, it can be acquired very early in the game if you go straight to carry a mana. The Thorn Whip is outclassed in every way. Do not use it. It is a farm drop from a singular enemy in the mountaintops of the Giants, meaning even before you can access it, it is already outclassed. I do not know why From Software continues to put weapons in the game, where as soon as you get them, they're already worse than other weapons. It's just something they're known for. It's very annoying. Hazel's Petal Whip is the best whip when factoring status, and when not optimizing for status, it works best on the Keen Affinity. It outclasses the Thorn Whip in every way outside of range, and weight. It can be gotten twice. One from each of the Hazlos, from Juno during the Volcano Manor Kill Quest, and it's dropped from Dialis upon his quest completion or killing him. As the whip DPS, when paired, is better than the two hand or one hand whip moveset, this makes Hazel's Pedal Whip the only whip you can use paired on a base new game. Meaning, it yes, it is the best whip you're going to have, unless you're going to use the Magma Whip for the Ash of War. Giant's Red Braid, as I said, is the longest whip. However, since it's found near the end of the game and has unremarkable DPS, it's really not worth using over other options if you can help it. The Magma Whip has the highest DPS of the whips if you loot the Ash of War, and given it can be gotten from Volcano Man or Kill Quest, it can be a good option for Dex Faith builds looking to use a whip. Now for the PvE tier list, I have the Magma Whip, the Urumi, and the Hazel's Pedal Whip all in S tier, as they offer the highest DPS. Then in B tier, I have the Giant's Red Braid. Even though it has lower DPS than the Thorn Whip, it's just not outclassed by anything directly so I would rank it a little bit higher. In C tier I have the Thorned Whip because it's outclassed by the Hazel's Petal Whip, and in D tier I have the Whip because it's outclassed by the Yurumi. For the PvP viability, Whips are a fast long range weapon and are positioned in C tier. The Whip 
Again, is outclassed in every way outside of weight. Do not use it. Rumi offers a unique heavy attack that when charged is better than the standard charge type attack. It outclasses the whip in every way outside of range and weight. It is the best whip. The thorn whip is outclassed in every way. Do not use it. Hazo's pedal whip is the best whip for status, but that doesn't make it good because status is relatively weak in PvP. Giant's Red Braid is the longest whip. Its Ash of War will combo the first two hits if the enemy is poised break one. Outside of that, it's not really useful. Magma Whip is the worst whip due to its short range and horrible damage. For the PvP tier list, Urume is in S tier. Giant's Red Braid and Hazo's Petal Whip are in C tier. You can make them work, but boy is it a struggle to do so. In D tier, you have the Whip, the Thorn Whip, and the Magma Whip Candlestick because they are either outclassed or just bad compared to the other options. And as always, I will have a written dive in the description if you wanted to read it without necessarily watching the video.